It's Madden NFL 24, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. All that and more coming up next. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. hard-hitting blue-collar franchises one of the better rivalries going the Ravens and Steelers are underway on the return from his end zone Godwin Iguibuque and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 so out come the Steelers now for their first drive they'll be led out by a third round pick back in 2018 out of Oklahoma State it's Mason Rudolph. And when Mason Rudolph is on the field, sometimes the scouting reports have to be revised a little bit because often quarterbacks like to throw short to get a rhythm. For Mason Rudolph, he loves the deep fade and he loves the deep post pattern. Anything over the top, those are his favorite shots downfield and that's what gets him comfortable. Rudolph gonna throw it to start out. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Blowing that play up. Roquan Smith as he gets the sack. Okay, partner. A couple points of interest right here, all right? Offensively, we see that they came out throwing the football. But maybe more importantly, the blitz that came defensively, they got right after it. And you were telling me pregame before we came on air, you think this is something we could see a lot. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because this is a unit that wants to play the game on their terms. Here's one deep for Pickens. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that could have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Presley Harvin on the punt. And it's fielded at the 34. That'll be a 50-yard punt with eight on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The number eight, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 42. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. A short throw caught by Andrews. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? 
they catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to start them out when you do that. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Well, the obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. By that yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. Now Jackson on first down. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Jackson, option right. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll go down at the 28. Give him four yards as he does it himself, and it's a first down. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up, and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. On first and ten, it's Jackson. A slant route caught by Bateman. And that's good for a pickup of ten yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go, and sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled. Work. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Justice Hill from 19 yards away. And the Ravens are on the board first here this afternoon. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, And it's now a 7-0 game. Drive that time of six plays. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Adafi Owe showed off the pass rush skills. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it facing a second and long situation. Here's Rudolph. Well, this is taken in, it's complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Defense. 
So a costly penalty yardage wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, he's less likely to draw the flag. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. From the 50, it's Rudolph. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window and fired a bullet in there for the completion. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Now it's Rudolph off the bootleg. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Defense is moving a little bit, on back on their heels, but they're on a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Second and ten. Now a play fake, and it's Rudolph. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Offense is all over, continue to be aggressive, and most people never turn down a shot at a deep ball. But oftentimes, it attracts a little bit of extra attention, and it did on that play, and that one got knocked away. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Now Rudolph. Open man, that's the tight end fire move. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. This one from 48 yards away. Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head, head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they're going to push off at the end of the round, too. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. 
from the 28. It's second and five. Jackson. Looking for Bateman. He's got him complete. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Jackson to Bateman there for the Baltimore first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And this is going to be pulled in by the tight end, Andrews. Touchdown! Mark Andrews, 35 yards. And the Ravens will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Tucker with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. A drive there of just four plays. And it's Mark Andrews who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. touchdown taken at the goal line and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 holding receiving They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. That often runs you into a penalty. A very costly holding penalty. It backs them up all the way inside their 10 to start this drive. Rudolph on first down. Incomplete. Yeah, offenses always try to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only get to the well so many times in the game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. Here's second and ten. Rudolph. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. This time they stay on the ground, and he's going to be taken down short of the first right around the 15-yard line. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. It's Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. He'll look to set up his blockers. Almost outkicked his coverage there. 48-yard punt, but 10 on the return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half.
Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. From the gun, it's Jackson. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. On second down, Jackson. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now it's Jackson. And it is caught. And he will have the Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a terrific first half from the dual-threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. He fired his guys into the lead with two first-half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. for the second half 14 to 3 our scores we are back underway on EA Sports returning at Justice Hill and good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20 up come the Ravens now they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter and Charles they got the lead put your coaching hat on here now what's the game plan for the second half I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. We're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and 10. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, 
they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode. Really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. It looked like almost some miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Jackson to throw. He finds Bateman over the middle. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Throwing is Jackson. Ooh, the juke. The decision to scramble almost got him to first. Just short, nine yards, and it brings up fourth and inches. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. From here, this would have been a 48-yarder, but no, they're going to go for it. To throw is Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards, and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. So after the conversion on fourth, here's first and 10 just outside of the red zone. Jackson. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. Second and eight coming from the 19. Jackson now. just as he let that go. And now it's third down. I think he's as fine with that incompletion as a quarterback can be, in all honesty. He avoided his first sack of the game, and he did have a chance of connecting for yardage, just unable to on that throw. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Jackson. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Bateman from 19 yards away. And the Ravens take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback.
The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Harris starts to drive on the ground. And he's got some space here. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Rudolph looking to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Rudolph looking to throw it. Johnson with a completion over the middle. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They're giving those short little routes. Tackled him in bounds, too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. This offense so far on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. That swung out wide to Harris. And he will have a Steelers first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. Back to the air, Rudolph. His throw incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Rudolph. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. Taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Rudolph throwing again. And in for the Steelers' touchdown. George Pickens from 10 yards out. And the Steelers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. The fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. In the fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, 
the team expecting it. They do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. On first and ten, it's Dobbins. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Larry Ogan Joby there to make the tackle. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, Jackson... Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Down to Inigo's Jackson, and that should seal it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.